Identifying and locating power line noise. Produced by the ARRL Laboratory. Power line noise is a problem for users of the amateur radio service. An unwanted and illegal power line noise source will not only degrade the reception of received signals for the radio amateur, it can degrade or obliterate reception of commercial broadcast stations as well. Power line noise is also a sign of a far more serious problem, a failure in the power distribution system, which can eventually become a danger to the general public. Every downed power line created radio noise before it failed. Well, electrical noise and power, problems with power lines could be the reason one Lubbock woman is having to clean up a big mess in her backyard, and she is not the only one. Well, Karen, we told you three weeks ago that the Federal Communication Commission gave LPNL and XL Energy a citation back in July for breaking federal law. The feds located 44 places in Lubbock where the power lines are arcing, causing electrical interference. But during our investigation, we discovered those lines aren't just causing interference with radios. It could be the reason for mysterious fires around Lubbock. You, you can see the uh, neighbor's fence and the grass that it burnt. She says the Lubbock Fire Department was able to put the fire out just in time before it spread to her house. Before the fire, Gwen's neighbor saw something wrong with the power lines. And the neighbor saw it smoking and sparking and then saw the fire later. And it caught their grass on fire. Um, and my son said that it was down. She says LPNL repaired the power lines after the fire. But it's unclear whether the lines are the culprit. My son said that the fire marshal said that he couldn't tell what caused the fire. Another fire happened just three weeks ago. George Calvert says the grass in the alley behind his house caught fire. Do you know who came out to fix that problem? Well, help you nailed it. We checked out the repairs in the alley and noticed a wire left dangling in mid-air. We didn't touch it in fear that it could have been a live wire. It appears that the, there, there's a problem in regards to a loose ground wire that's, that's on the pole, which I think could be a safety issue here. Brian Edwards has known about problem power lines for years. He complained to the city 14 years ago when he noticed electrical interference on his ham radio, and he discovered power lines were causing it. Electrical investigators believe the interference is due to arcing. It's when two wires spark, and eventually what can happen, those wires can burn in two and cause a fire when it hits the ground. The Lubbock Fire Department says since January, they have responded to 73 fires due to power lines. They say various reasons could have caused the fire, like squirrels, the weather, and even arcing. Do you remember what the weather was like that day? It was a little windy, but it wasn't bad, considering the wind we have here. Brian Edwards claims for years LPNL has ignored problems until it got a federal citation this summer. The citation also went to XL Energy, demanding that both power companies work together to get the problems resolved. XL contracted with Mike Martin, an independent electrical consultant, who will be in Lubbock in October to locate the problems and fix them. We've learned LPNL has agreed to split the cost with XL to bring this independent consultant here to Lubbock. We'll keep you posted on any new developments. In the meantime, often it's the radio amateur who detects a power line problem by picking up the signal of an arcing power pole component. This noise can make communications impossible for radio amateurs near a power pole component failure. Every year, hundreds of hams call the American Radio Relay League for assistance with identifying troublesome noise sources. ARRL has a very active program to help amateurs resolve a wide range of RFI issues. One of the most important of those is the program to deal with power line noise. This involves a cooperative program with the FCC where we bring the FCC into the process fairly early on to ensure that the utilities are aware that the FCC is watching these cases get resolved. One of the first steps in that is for the complainant the ham with the power line noise, to learn about power line noise from ARRL's webpage and its RFI book. The amateur is then able to identify power line noise from a lot of other noises that can affect amateur radio stations. Once the noise is found and determined to be power line noise, it's often much easier for that amateur to work with a power company. 
This process often works. It's an important place to start to have the amateur work with his own power company because ARRL doesn't have the resources to resolve every single problem directly with a power company. That's done best locally. If that doesn't work, ARRL is the next step in that process, contacts the power company directly. Uh, we have at that point good records of the problem that the amateurs had, uh, the steps that have been taken in the case. So that background allows us to provide information to the power company to help them understand the issues, understand their responsibilities, and to start working on the problem. Uh, we've often offered direct assistance to these utilities, often providing consultation by telephone. Well, no process is perfect, and if these reasonable efforts to resolve this locally don't result in a fix, uh, ARRL then can send all of this documentation on the case ready to go to the FCC, who will then work on the problem and start sending a series of letters to the power company that more often than not gets them to start getting more engaged and attempting to work on the problem. Good morning, ARRL Laboratory, Mike Gruber speaking. How may I help you? All those interference calls come into Mike, and he needs to ask a few questions. Does the noise go away when the main circuit breaker is turned off? Listen with a battery portable if you can. If the noise is still present when the main breaker is turned off, it's probably not coming from inside your house. As you tune across the band, does it uh, exhibit any sort of a pattern? Or does it change in characteristics in any way? For example, do you hear a regular and repeating pattern of peaks and nulls as you tune across the spectrum, say every 40 or 60 kilohertz apart? If the noise is constant across the bands, then you may be experiencing power line noise. Does it ever go away, uh, for example, when it rains or during periods of high humidity? If the noise goes away with high humidity, the moisture may be shorting the sparking gap. Rain tends to eliminate power line noise in many cases, but the opposite can also be true. Rain can aggravate a power line noise situation in many cases until conditions are dry. Have you tried looking for the noise source? Most hams try to find the noise source or its direction before calling in for help. Well, you need to file a complaint with your local utility. Try contacting your customer service department if you don't know where to start. It can also be helpful to ask for a supervisor if you can. You can write a letter to the supervisor as a follow-up afterwards. And uh, by the way, we also have a power line noise FAQ page on our website. You might find that helpful. Since 1999, the FCC's worked with the ARRL lab folks in resolving uh, RFI interference cases through a cooperative agreement in which the lab takes first cut at determining the source of these noises. The success rate with this program has been very high and we've been very happy with the results and in many cases, perhaps most cases, the ARRL lab is able to resolve the source of the noise uh, without going to the FCC. The lab can help you with the proper testing to determine uh, where the noise is coming from, what to do in your shack, what devices to check. And the point is that we often assume that it's power line interference when very often it's a device in your shacks such as, and these are real cases, an Ethernet adapter, a paper shredder, a computer power supply, or even the circuit board in a new washing machine. And so the lab will help you eliminate this and document uh, your testing of these devices so that if you have to go to the power company, you're already a step ahead with your full documentation and you can show that you've done the homework in eliminating sources of inter interference in your house. And I emphasize documentation here because it's very important not to assume where the power interference, or where the interference is coming from. Uh, you may think you know what it is, but assume that you don't know and test every device in your house. The league can show you how to do that. Their articles and their website is a wonderful resource for this. And in fact, on the website, you can even lis listen to sample noises of radio frequency interference. And you'll be one step ahead when you go to the power company. And when you do go to the power company, take full notes of who you talk to and when. And that is in the event that you have to go to the power company. Take full notes so that when it goes to the FCC, the case will be ready to, to pick up and run with and they won't have to fill in any gaps that, uh, that you can fill in as an amateur. RFI investigation should be left up to the professionals. Um, 
you're dealing with 8,000 volts or 15,000 volts on the poles. If there's a bad piece of hardware, you don't want to be banging the pole or shaking with the guy wire. Uh, that could cause a failure and have the hardware uh, come down, possibly cause an electric fault. That could lead to serious personal injury. The utility people have special equipment designed to find the faults or find the electrical interference without touching the poles and they can do it safely and find the right piece of equipment that's failing. Let's review how to identify power line noise. Power line may be the noise source if noise is still present with the main breaker turned off, noise is constant across the bands, not at regular intervals, noise diminishes or goes away entirely when it rains. A word of advice. Try to locate where the noise is loudest with a portable radio, but do not touch the suspected power pole. File a complaint with a power company and ask for a supervisor. Explain the steps you've taken to determine that it's power line noise. There are three possible resolutions after contacting the power company. Power company assigns a well-trained, properly equipped employee who finds the noise source quickly. The power company assigns a poorly trained, ill-equipped employee who may or may not find the noise source or find the wrong noise source. The power company ignores the complaint and does nothing. In this case, a well-trained employee goes out to meet the ham in person. He observes the noise problem firsthand by assessing it on the ham bands in use. The investigator connects to the ham's antenna and captures a signature of the noise to match outside. Do not underestimate the importance of signature analysis. In many cases, an RFI complaint turns out to be a nearby consumer device. The interference may sound like power line noise, but it's not. A properly trained RFI investigator will know the difference. Under the FCC rules, if a noise source is not caused by the power company's equipment, the power company is not responsible for finding or fixing it. This is true even when the RF is being conducted onto and radiated by the power lines. If the RFI investigator finds the signature to be inconsistent with power line noise, he or she can immediately close the case and the power company is off the hook. He tunes up in frequency to find the same signature and narrow the search radius. He uses a directional antenna to find a bearing for the search. Let's review this part of the solution. The utility willingly met the ham in person. He observed the noise problem firsthand. He assessed the ham band with the noise on it. He captured a signature of the noise. He used a directional antenna and rotated it to find the direction of the noise. Signature analysis is a cost-effective way for a utility to find a failing piece of apparatus on a utility pole. It's a small investment to make to get the proper equipment and it yields a huge cost savings when they only have to fix something once. They get the correct piece of uh, apparatus on the pole that's failing and they replace that and it saves the utility a lot of time and money. Let's review a responsible power company's attitudes. It's best to investigate complaints before they become expensive to fix. Every downed wire generated radio noise before it fell. Properly trained and equipped staff can find the noise source quickly. The investigator was able to verify the arcing noise source using signature analysis. This hardware arcing matches the signature taken at the ham's antenna. The failed component is found by using an ultrasonic dish. Let's review how the investigator found the noise source. He started his investigation in the direction of the noise source. He used a directional antenna to zero in on the source. He tuned up to 400 megahertz with a Yagi when he was getting close. He used the 400 megahertz Yagi to identify the source pole. He matched the complainant's noise signature to that found in the field and he used an ultrasonic dish to find the failed component on the pole. In working with utilities, ARRL often finds that they want to fix a problem, but they're not really sure just how to go about doing it. Uh, the League has identified uh, several companies, including RFI services, that provide training for utilities that want to learn how to use the proper equipment and proper techniques 
to correctly sort out the power line noise that may be causing a problem from the many other noise sources that may be present near an amateur station but not necessarily heard by that station. We've often had RFI services here at ARRL headquarters uh, as one of the places across the country that it conducts its training services. Uh, RFI services and others also will go out and help utilities find a specific power line noise source uh, and do so very, very efficiently compared to some of the, the longer term problems we've seen with utilities trying to find some of these noises themselves. The amateur radio service isn't the only licensed radio service affected. Commercial broadcasters lose listeners to high noise levels that can degrade or obliterate broadcast reception. Power line noise can have a dramatic effect on broadcast reception. We most notice it on the AM broadcast band. As you drive along in your car listening to the AM radio, you may drive past a location or a pole, and all of a sudden you hear that buzzing sound coming up in the speaker, obliterating the station you're listening to. Well, that's more than likely power line noise, and it's quite annoying. But as you drive away, the sound soon fades away. But if you live near a power line noise source, AM broadcast band reception can be degraded and it's quite annoying. You, you may be listening to your favorite ball game on the radio and in the background all you hear is bacon fried. But the AM broadcast band isn't the only band that's affected by power line noise. The FM broadcast band is as well. Even though you may not hear the noise itself, the noise floor goes up, it raises up and can mask weaker or even average signals. And digital Television is also affected by power line noise. A power line noise source arcing away can degrade the picture so it pixelates, it freezes up, and goes to a blue screen. And that's over the air broadcasting. And through the cable, power line noise source can also affect the cable systems. And it's quite a problem. Imagine a power line noise source getting into a cable system and a whole block can't get on the internet or use their telephone or it affects the picture on the TV station that they're watching. So power line noise affects cable systems and over-the-air broadcast stations, TV and radio. Now that affects the bottom line of the broadcaster. Imagine there are less people out there that can hear your commercials and perhaps it might even affect ratings to a bit. That person with the Nielsen book is not going to be filling in your station because they won't be listening to it because of power line noise. So uh, if uh, you have that noise source, well, call your local power company and ask them to fix it because it wrecks your broadcast reception. As part of this process, the FCC sends a series of advisory letters. Uh, but if those fail, the FCC also undertakes field investigations as an additional enforcement step. At this stage, ARRL is pressing the FCC to issue some fines to some of these utilities that have not done a good job despite years of ARRL and FCC involvement. Thank you for watching our presentation. We hope you have learned how to identify and locate power line noise and communicate with the local power company. How the local power company responds to a complaint can vary, and please understand, the elimination of a power line noise source doesn't always go smoothly. If you would like to know more about power line noise, visit our FAQ page, 73 from the ARRL Laboratory.